Hi, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and who's ready to play with some more kinky yarn? This is a essentially a really long sock blank of some super bulky yarn created by Makers Mercantile. I believe this yarn is 100% superwash wool. Uh, it's 200 grams, and it's stored in this beautiful, beautiful way. And I thought it would be fun to dye this wheel without unraveling it first. So we can dye the intact wheel and then unwrap and then unravel and see what kind of patterns that we can create. Full disclosure, Makers Mercantile did send me these for free, but I don't have an affiliate relationship with them and I'm not earning any commission off of the yarn or anything like that. I just think that it is a cool product and let's play with it. And as we jump into the video, wait a minute, subscribe, Turn on your notifications, and if you're excited for the video, give it a thumbs up. I pre-soaked the wheel for a while in just some plain tap water. Gosh, I'm debating. I'm debating back and forth, forth between low immersion and a steaming base technique. Ooh, I know it'll be too late, but let me know down in the comments which you would do. I plan to do the same kind of pattern on this wheel either way, but yeah, vote in the comments. <laughs> hand painting one out. I just added three tablespoons of white vinegar to this pre-soak and I'm going to let it sit a little longer uh, just so that way the vinegar has time to soak into our cake. I think I want to paint this a little bit like a pizza pie and I think I want to use five colors. I have some remnant green and gray that are diluted. I'm not quite sure what their dilutions are. Uh, but um, we'll use this jacquard, I think it was emerald green and silver gray that are left over. I will dilute, I think, some frozen, some jacquard golden yellow, and some jacquard violet as well for some of the other pieces of this pie. But I'm going to wait with those last three colors. I think that I will start trying to apply the green and the gray first and then decide if I think I want to go with the 1% solution or like a dilution. So we'll be back in a little bit. I'm actually pretty proud of my setup. I am going to paint this directly in my steamer basket. That way I don't have to move it and I won't be pressing it and things like that. Even though I'm pressing it right now, but here is our cake. We're going to press it back into shape. You could inject dye in different areas, but I think I want to paint and to create something really geometric. At least that's my plan. There will likely be mistakes throughout this process. Ooh, but I can sort of lift this because there's going to be spread of the colors and this piece of the pie might not be big enough but I am taking this bottle and just slowly slowly applying dye and letting that sink in just trying to make sure that I have this top section painted over well that actually kind of worked there's a little bit of drip out, which I'm going to soak up. I think I'm going to repeat that. Let's go, okay, let's do the green, so we don't know the dilution. I am going to do a more narrow slice than I think that I need, because we can always make it bigger, but trying to save space for that yellow. I have no idea what concentration these different colors are. But with this pattern, I think you guys can see some of the potential. Because we're going to have some white probably left, some larger patches of color, then some smaller patches of color. I think, oh dear. Oh no. I think it could be really cool make the green a little bigger. Okay. All right. Let's 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 go for it. This could be orangey. We will see. Um 
Yeah, it's a little orangey. But it might spread to be more yellow. That's okay. I'm not mad at it. There also seems to be some sediment from this color. I might go back in and add more of the different colors, but for now, I'm planning on leaving it be. So here's our violet, which has the tie as well. not going to be perfect especially towards the center but if you guys can see what's happening we're gonna have the biggest section of green it's sort of this fractal kind of thing almost which I think is really really cool uh, maybe it would have been a little easier if I had some guar gum or something oh and this blue is not really sticking that's okay. Sort of tapping and painting it along. Oh, this is fun! Oh, man. So what we don't know, and then the gray is, has the potential to go the furthest down. I want to, I want to pick it up, but I don't. Um, I think that we were able to be fairly shallow across the board. I think I might add a little more color to some of these sections. Even in the gray, even in this like intermediate oh dear, area. That's what I was afraid of. I was afraid of spread, but you know, Stuff's going to happen. Stuff's going to happen. Um, okay. Here's our violet. Okay. And then our frozen. Adding some more volume. Oh, this is so, so cool. I am really, really excited. Uh, I'm not going to lift it up, but um, I'm not sure if you guys can see. Oh, dear. I don't want to move it too much, but you can kind of see around these edges. Uh, there you go. Kind of show you that the color is not down those outside edges. Um, here, let me, let me try a different camera angle. Okay, now you can see that I did not add color to that outside edge. But this looks so cool! Alright, to the steamer basket we go. We're now over the stove top and we are going to steam set this for... I think I'm going to be safe and go 40 minutes just because I want to make sure the heat can penetrate towards the center. We definitely could have injected dye in towards the center. We could have flipped this over and added color to the other side in a different kind of pattern. There are so many things that you could do with this yarn. And this is essentially a blank. So we're going to get a gradient here. But we're going to have some longer sections of speckly color. So there'll be like a big section of speckly kind of green, a bigger one of like a variegated white and orange, and it'll repeat. But then those colors are going to get closer and closer and closer together all the way through the skein. At least that's what we think. Um, so I'm excited to open this up, which, goodness, maybe we'll have to do that at the washing stage. I'm not entirely sure. But either way, first we're going to steam set for 40 minutes, and then we'll come back. 
And since we're using commercial acid dyes, everything today is dedicated for dye, not used for food, yada, yada, yada. 40 minutes are up, and so now I'm gonna turn off the heat. Oof, this is pretty. The golden yellow is definitely much more orange than I originally anticipated, but I think that it is fine. I am excited, and I don't see in this limited view a lot of spread of color down into the cake. I'm excited. I think I am going to try to wash the cake as is once it has cooled. And then once it's dry, then we can try to open it up. That is my attempt. Um, it's po Because this is going to be yarn with some wave in it, we're going to want to unravel it at the end of this video anyway, and therefore we can wash it at that point. So that's my plan. Here's our beautiful wheel. And oh, I am touching the top. I did get some dye in my hand. There must be some stuff crushed out. Here's the bottom. We can see some color peeking through, not a ton. Um, but let's wash very carefully. Yeah, I'm seeing some yellow come out. Um, this is super wash. And I did see some particles. Yeah, there's some particles. Um, I'm going to do my best to keep this intact. Um, so I'm actually going to just let water run over that yellow section. Maybe change the water periodically. I'm not sure the best way to deal with this. Maybe... Oh no! Oh no! Stay intact. There. Maybe something like that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to rinse it a little bit. I thought I was recording. I switched to lukewarm water. I even added a tiny bit of dish soap and just sort of have been spraying it. There is a tiny, tiny, almost imperceptible amount of color bleeding. Um, and the other fun thing is as I have this come up and sort of put it back down. It's sort of getting more pinwheel-like than it was. I wish I could say I dyed it like that, but that's sort of from the shifting around. Um, I'm just trying to gently, without undoing it, because I do want a reveal moment. I don't really want to stretch it out. Okay, sort of squeeze out some of the water. I'm gonna lay this flat on my drying rack. Hopefully it can just be sort of supported like so, um, but then, yeah, once it's dry or close to dry, we'll come and open it up. Here is our wheel. I still think it's fun to sort of, like, as things sort of like shift and move, you can kind of change, there we go. We can make it look like more of a spiral. I mean, that's cool. That's not how I dyed it, but it's fun, and I kind of enjoy playing with it like that. Now it is time for me to open it up, lay it out, and let's take a look at the colorway. This is so, so cool. As we predicted, we have small patches of color in that repeating order, that as we go from one end to the other, those patches get longer and longer. The pigment is mostly on one end of the wheel. We could have injected it a little further, but I think that it's gonna be really fun to look at this sort of fractal type gradient once we unravel it. Yes, there is spread in some of these areas with some of the colors, but there is white in each of these sections. And so, yeah, sure, depend, like right here, we might get some like black and orange mix. It's not gonna be like a clean shift, but it's gonna be fun to see what we notice if it looks more and more variegated as we get to one end. So I will go and unravel this kinky yarn off camera onto a Nitty Naughty so we can take a look at that unraveled color progression. Here is the kinky yarn wound onto our Nitty Naughty. I think it's a little hard to tell what this color progression is going to look like with it wound on the Nitty Naughty, especially because there seems to be a little bit of pooling in the way that the color is wrapped. But I can absolutely say while unwrapping it, I noticed that there would be a longer patch of like the black versus white, black, white, and then those color changes got a lot closer together 
the further down I got on the skein. This is one reason why sometimes I prefer to leave yarn in blanks and not unravel it. I think that it's much easier to look at the blank and see, okay, I get a sense of how the order of these colors will go and that kind of progression. It's easier for me to visualize it looking at that than it is to look at this yarn, which isn't immediately obvious that it is some kind of asymmetric colorway. Why is this yarn called Kinky? <laughs> well, this should really give you that clue. Because it was knit into a tube, it was knit into this blank, when you unravel it, you get that wave from those knit stitches. Now, you could knit with this directly, and you could knit directly from it without unraveling it first. Uh, that could add a little bit of interest into your project, or my personal preference is to go and relax the crimp. So once I am done filming this video, I'm gonna just go soak this in some tap water, let this relax, and then hang it to dry. And that'll give something that's a little more manageable to work with. I think that a kinked yarn like this, for me, tends to be prone for tangling. There wasn't really any way I wasn't gonna unravel this wheel for the video. But in general, I'm curious to hear what you, your thoughts are. Do you prefer, say, if you're shopping for yarn, to have the intact blank or to have it unraveled? Uh, I think that some blanks can be such a work of art that I think I'm in team intact and to unravel or knit, crochet, whatever from it directly but I know people vary on this a lot. In general, if I have some blanks that I don't unravel in my videos because I think they're beautiful and tacked, I do always give my customers the option to have me unravel and relax that twist for them before I send it to them. And then when I unravel it, I will take pictures and I'll post it to my Instagram. So it's worth following me on Instagram. I'm just at Chemnitz. Um, the details for that are always in the video description of all of my videos. Oh, I should give a th another thank you to Makers Mercantile for sending me some samples of this yarn. Uh, I'm having fun playing with it. I still have one wheel left. So let me know what kind of technique you would most like to see me do in the video description. I guess I'm asking for you to leave a lot of comments. Leave a lot of comments! Woohoo! <laughs> Actually, <laughs> the biggest way that you can help support the content I'm creating here is to engage with these videos. Subscribing, liking, having your notifications on, and leaving comments is the biggest way to help support the content and help YouTube then recommend it to more people. But if you'd like another way to support the channel, I do have an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, and a Patreon. Uh, you can find details for all of that in the video description, and I also have links in the iCard in the top right hand corner of the screen. I know that I really randomly selected colors for this wheel, but I have to say, I kind of like them together a lot. And the one perk for me of unraveling a blank or something, or re a colorway, is you can better visualize how these colors play together in a way that is harder to see sometimes when the skein is still as dyed. But things knit up in so many different ways depending on the pattern and everything you're using. So in general, I like to be able to see how something was dyed to understand how I might wanna use it. For example, with this particular yarn, I would probably do a cowl or a hat or something versus doing some a pair of fingerless mitts uh, just because they would look pretty different. Although this patterning and that difference would also be pretty cool on mittens. So it all really depends on if you like to have things that match <laughs> or if you like them to be related, but maybe have that gradient that goes through it. It's just, all of it is just a lot of fun. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching, everyone.